Welcome. In this series of videos, we will look at topics common to both the PowerBasic console and Windows compilers. Today, we will look at the use of the replace command to bulk replace text in files. In this series of videos, we'll be covering topics which are common to both the PowerBasic Windows compiler and the PowerBasic console compiler. In order to do this, I've set up a small common library to allow us to display information on the screen from a program regardless of whether you're using the Windows or the console compiler. There are three basic functions in this common display library. There's prep output, log and wait. Today we're going to look at replacing characters within a file. So, so I created a small file myfile.csv and this file if we open it up in notepad we will see that it contains a number of lines of text. If we look down at the bottom of the window we'll see that this file is in the Unix format. That means each line is terminated with a single line feed character rather than in Windows where it's a carriage return and a line feed. What we want to do with this file is we want to replace every instance of the line feed character with a carriage return line feed. So let's have a look at the code. Now we're going to add one of our previous libraries, the file handling routines library, and we're going to add a couple of new functions to this library. First of all, I've created two constants, one to contain the name of the input file and one to contain the name of the output file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, which is a string, which is going to contain the entire contents of our file. Now we're going to create a function whose job it is to copy an entire file into that variable. And we're going to call this routine fun binary file a string. Now we're going to give this new function a single parameter. The parameter being the location of the file. Now we already have the file name stored in our constant, so we can put that in and we'll tell the program that the file is going to be coming from the same folder as our executable. So if this function works, and we'll define this function in a moment, it's going to give us data inside the str file string variable. So on our next line of code we we'll want to test to make sure that this variable has indeed been populated. So if the str file variable is empty then we have not succeeded in loading our file. And we'll put a small message out to the console just to let us know. So if we have loaded the file successfully, we can put a message out to our console. Now, having loaded this entire file into a string variable, we can use the replace command to bulk replace text within that variable. And in this case, we're replacing the line feed character. Now, PowerBasic has our inbuilt constant for line feed character. And all we have to do is to say we want to replace this with this inside this variable. Now, we can replace any character within the file as long as we know what the value of that character is. The line feed character has a decimal value of 10, a hex value of 0a, and an octal value of 0, 1, 2. Now we can quite as easily use the control dollar command, like so, to do exactly the same job. If we have a look at control dollar in the help file, you'll see that control dollar for Unicode has two dollars at the end, and for non-Unicode files it will be a single dollar sign. So using chr dollar and the appropriate code, in this case the decimal value, 
which we've replaced the line feed with any character we wish. We just leave it as line feed. What we want to do now, having replaced it inside the string, we want to save the string back out to a file. We want to test to make sure the file has been correctly saved. So first of all, we'll clear the error variable. And we're going to use our second function. called binary string save as file. And this will take two parameters. The first one being the file we wish to write to. And again, we'll precede this with the exe path. And the second parameter would be the value we wish to write to that file. In this case, it's str file. Obviously, just in case anything goes desperately wrong with your code, or if you want to repeat things, uh, never write to the original file. Always keep your original file safe. Always write to a new file. That's especially important with the binary commands, because if you're loading in one file into a string and then sending a smaller number of bytes back out to the same file, um, you will not necessarily overwrite the entire file. So again, if the file cannot be saved, that function would return false. And we're going to put out the error dollar, which is the name of the error that was encountered. And if it works correctly, we can put a message out to the console to say that the file has been saved successfully. So what we have to do now is to create these two new functions. So if we load up our file handling routines, we we'll want to put in two new functions. One to load the file into a string and one to save it. So if we look at our first one, binary file is string. This takes the single parameter, being the name and location of the file, and we'll need some parameters for this one. Since something could go wrong with the file handling, we'll use a, a try catch in this case. It's always good to make sure you trap all your errors in your code. And the first thing we want to do is we want to pick up a file handle for the file using the free file function. And we're going to open our file, this case for binary operation. Now, you have options here when you actually open a file for reading. You can actually see whether you want to have a shared lock on it, in which case you will attempt to read the file, but you will not place an exclusive lock on it, which does mean other processes could read the file while you're actually reading it. They could also try and write to the file while you're trying to read it as well. So it depends what you want to do. You could put a lock shared. If in doubt, have a look at the open statement in the help file, which covers all the different types of lock command. Shared, write, read, and read, write. What we're going to do here is just a lock shared. Now what we want to do first of all is pick up the size of the file using the length of file function. And then we're going to use the get dollar on our handle for the size of the file and we're going to put the value straight into our variable. And then the return of the function is that value. Now in our catch, we will actually make the return of the function to be an empty one string. And then finally, we will close it off. 
So what will happen within this one, we will take one parameter, which is the location of the file. We will pick up a file handle. We will open the file that we specified in binary format as a lock shared. We will get the size of the file. We will then read into that variable the entire file. Then we will return what we get back from the file as a return from the function, as the string. So that's our first function out of the way, which will get our value into the string. Now what we need to do is we need to create the function that will take the string and save it back out to the file. So this takes two parameters, the first parameter being the location of the file and the second parameter being the data. So again in here we'll need a handle. And we will then pick up a, the next free handle for the file system. And again, we'll use our try catch. And the first thing we'll do is we will open our file again for binary. using our handle. And then we we'll use the put dollar command to send to our file handle the data we put in. And then assuming there are no errors, we will return true. Should any error actually occur, we will return false. And our final statement is to close the handle. It really is as straightforward as that. So the function takes two parameters, first being the file location and name, the second parameter being the actual string data. We create a local variable, which we will name correctly. We pick up the next available file handle. We open the file we're given for binary lock to that file handle. We will then put the string data we passed in as a parameter out to that file. And if all is well, we will return true. If anything fails, we will return false. And then we'll finally close down the handle to the file. Now, assuming we haven't done anything wrong, this should compile, which it doesn't. Oh, we have not put in a then. Let's try that now. That's saved quite successfully. Right, so if we have a look at our, our original file, there is a original file, myfile.csv. Now what should happen is we should have a new file appear called mynewfile.csv and where is the first file? If we open it up again, is a Unix file. The saved file should be a Windows format file. So let's try running our program. And the program's telling is the file was loaded successfully and the file was saved successfully. So we then have a look at our folder. We now have a new mynewfile.csv. If we double click on that, and have a look at the file, we can see at the bottom the file is showing as a Windows CRLF, carriage return line feed. And the content of the file is exactly the same as the content of the first file. Now while we're replacing just the one character within the file, you can do other things as well. You could replace multiple things inside the file in the same operation, as in put more replace commands in, as in this, as in for example we want to replace the word brown and that would work just as well. 
Well, that's it for today. I hope you'll find these functions useful. Thank you for watching.